Are you having any singing in this? Uh, well, no singing. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Three, okay. two, one. Right. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us once again, where my very special guest today is Anthony, uh, yet another member of the burgeoning carnivore community, as I understand it. You also have other interests as well, don't you, Anthony? Yes, Stand up on your hind legs. Tell us all about yourself. Where can people find you? What is it that you do? I'll shut up. You can talk. Okay, so uh, yes, my name is Anthony. Uh, we run up uh, my my business partner and I run up a uh, a um, concept known as Lean Seven. And uh, my background is as a personal trainer. I've been a personal trainer for twenty one years. And so uh, my first four or five years of personal training uh, was more sport specific. So I was training track athletes, uh, namely sprint uh, hundred meter sprinters. And then from there on, I believe um, it was two thousand and four when the the first season of this weight loss show first came out that everyone doesn't like anymore, including myself. Mm-hmm. Very popular show. But at the time, it was a big thing, and uh, body recomposition was a massive thing. So I got out of sports specific into body recomposition. And, uh, yeah, so I learned what not to do for about four or five years. And I couldn't get people in shape, no matter how hard I tried. I, I thought exercise was the Mr. Fix-It. And uh, in 2009, I moved to London and I was working with some pretty good personal trainers. I met a really good doctor there, a good friend of mine, uh, and he was not your traditional doctor. He was very, wasn't uh, down the path of uh, traditional allopathic. He was just, uh, just new stuff. Anyway, one day I was at his practice doing some blood work for a patient and um, I said to him, you know what, man, I've been at this weight loss, fat loss game for the last uh, four or five years. I still haven't cracked the code. And um, what is it? And he said one question. He used one statement and it changed my life forever because he said, if you want to understand health, longevity, fat loss, recomposition, you've got to pay attention to hormones, right? Hormones are these chemical messengers that tell the body how to perform certain tasks. Turns out that there is a certain hormones that are lipolytic that help the body oxidize or quite unquote burn fat, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Well, I like to use the word oxidize or fat loss. And then some of them are lipogenic. They cause the body to store body fat, right? So we isolated seven of them, six being lipolytic, one being lipogenic. And yeah, then he said, lifestyle interventions drive hormones, drive health. So the, the very lifestyle choices we make every day, whether we know we're doing them or not, will drive the very hormones and the hormones do the rest. Right, so the lean seven came about as the seven hormones that drive lipolysis, or I like to call it anti-aging fitness, and there's a reason for that why I called it later on. So uh, that was basically it. So the lean seven been going around uh, for quite some time since 2009 because uh, once I discovered these seven hormones or was uh, reintroduced to them, it was a plug and play. It was just 100% predictable that people would get results. So yeah, so those who were interested. In learning more about the Lean 7, you can go to lean7.com.au and schedule in a discovery call, and we'll happily give you uh, some rundown on that. Awesome. So that's basically it, yeah. So, um, awesome. yeah. Man, so, surely, though, surely, surely, it's all about calories in, calories out, Anthony. What are you talking about? It's actually MIMO. Oh, MIMO, mass in, is it? Mass in, mass out. Good, good. So it's not Kiko, it's MIMO, M-I-M-O, right? Mass in, mass out. Now, I was down the bandwagon of the whole calories in, calories out early on, and I was completely against it. For some some part of me just did not agree with it. I don't know what it was, but all of my friends, I've got many friends who are bodybuilders, they were all about the calories in, calories out. It was just all about getting the the quantity of the food right, irrespective of the quality, right? Namely, you can get yourself in shape with a petrol station diet, and as long as you're taking in less mass than what you're expending, granted, you alter your body, right? You alter body composition. But what I came about this whole concept of anti-aging fitness is now. By the way, I should I should preface this is not a judgment call. This is an observational call. Okay. Mm-hmm. In training many bodybuilders over the years, I use bodybuilders because they're extreme athletes and they get themselves into extreme shape fast. But here's one commonality I found amongst most of them, not all of them, most of them. That's premature aging. Mm. From the neck and up, they look very aged. From the neck and down, they look great. So I thought, what's going on there? 
right? So just because you're in shape does not make you healthy. In fact, I don't know why they use the word health and fitness in the same sentence, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Health is the absence of disease. There's only one universal definition of health. That's the absence of disease, right? And so the goal here is to get yourself in shape at the service of the DNA, not the expense of the DNA. Right. So anti-aging fitness came about while we have this healthy, lean and young in the back here, healthy, lean, young, you've got to be healthy to get yourself in shape, not get in shape to think you're healthy. That's the first thing. You're going to be healthy to lose fat, not lose fat to think you're healthy, because if you're losing fat to think you're healthy, then you'll try everything, every trick under the book, including just taking any calorie, quote unquote calorie, Mm -hmm. to get the job done does not make you healthy right yeah now i've had friends who are bodybuilders who've passed away mid-30s and in shape all year round six pack all year round does not make you healthy the fitness industry has this uh, this uh, skewed belief that just because somebody is in shape gives them the authority to give advice on health okay and it needs to stop because they have no no qualifications, and most people that are in the fitness industry, it's a very visual, it's a very physically dominant industry, right? It's based on how you look, not how you feel or how you perform or how long you live. So that needs to stop. So just because you're in shape does not make you healthy. First, you've got to be healthy, drive health, and if you're driving health, you've got to go back to where it all started from. Okay? Take it back to the very beginning. Right? So it's not calories in, calories out. It's, as we all know, it's certain foods we eat drive hormones, and then hormones drive satiety and hunger. Right? Yes. So it's, governed, it's governed by that. I mean, I'm preaching to the choir right here. So. Well, you're being invited to, so please do. Yes. So um, once you get the quality of the food right, the quantity and the frequency or infrequency takes care of itself. Hunger is not just feed me now. It's the body saying, feed me the right stuff now. Mm. Give the body what it needs and it leaves you alone. So the whole concept of fasting, I like to call it inadvertent fasting. Because when you get to a place and you give the body what it needs, it can go a lot longer without food. And now you're fasting by default. That's the idea. And it's not something that I recommend straight away for people, especially if they've had a history of, of, of binge eating or of, um, food addictions or a history of just being malnourished, not eating the right foods. The first, the first idea is to get people eating enough of the right foods to a place whereby they just don't want to be eating much anymore. And now they're fasting by default. That's the way around it. So. Okay. So uh, without giving the game away, obviously, yeah, people that come to you as a client that want to be lean and young and whatever the first thing was that I can't see because it's behind your shoulder. <laughs> healthy, lean. Sorry, healthy, lean. healthy, healthy, lean and young. There, there yeah. it is. Healthy, lean. So they want to be healthy, lean and young, and they say, yes, sign me up. I'm in. Yes. What can they yes. expect? Okay. So there's five stages in a transformation. The first stage is where are we right now? Okay, where is, if you're being picked up by an Uber, they want to know your location. Where are we right now? Okay, so what's the damage? So we do a body composition test. Now, depending on where someone's body composition's at, there are various ways to do that, of course. I like to use, if they're, if for a female, they're under 30% body fat or under 25% body fat, I like to use a Harpen and caliper test. So skin folds. If they're big, we just go with tape measure. Yeah. photos, tape measure, and then that's stage one. Now, stage one is so important because nothing matters in and of itself. Nothing just materialises out of nothing. What they've been doing is giving them what they've got, okay? So this is a checkup from the neck up. When I tell a client, hey, listen, 
what you've been doing is giving you what you've got. Your current thinking has given you current circumstances. And now the challenge is you're going to have to rely on your current thinking to change your current circumstances. And you can't do that. So this is as good as it's going to get for you for one. So once they know that, it's like, okay, I'm open. I'm open to make change. Stage one is where are we right now? Stage two is where do we want to be and by what date? Mm -hmm. We like to put a sense of urgency there and the, the deadline needs to be somewhat realistic, right? So there needs to be a deadline, an end date to this transformation, right? Stage three is how are we going to get there? That's the battle plan. We cannot manage what we don't measure, okay? The battle plan needs to be conducive to health. We can't go down the path of just getting in shape to think you're healthy. No, we drive health first and being in shape becomes a byproduct of that. Stage four, probably the most important stage is how do we know if we're on track? As a good coach, you're more of a glorified accountability partner than anything else. Yeah. Okay. Here's a key note. Clients don't do what's expected. Clients do what's inspected. Mm. Okay, so if I take someone's waist measurements and over a two-week period, you've got two weeks to get it down for me. Guess what? They'll get the job done because they're doing what's inspected. And the fifth and final stage is what do we do with you once we get you there, once you achieve your results? Well, we have to create what we call forever change. Okay, because if it's taken a particular lifestyle approach to get you looking the way that you were, it's going to take another lifestyle approach to get you looking else something different, right? That's the five stages, and then we go to work. Stage one, we're over right now, and then we go to work and we have little milestones as we go along. Okay, like it? Okay. Yeah, makes perfect yeah. sense. Yeah. All right, so, yeah, building, building new habits, mm -hmm. um, reinforcing a change in lifestyle, making it permanent. Mm-hmm. The most important part, potentially. Yes. How does that work? How do people achieve that in their lives? Again, without giving the game away. But. I came back from a, uh, a convention with Dr. Joe Dispenza. He was in town about a week ago, and I love his work because a lot of the things he speaks about through quantum physics really makes a difference. But he, I mean, I had a whole booklet full of notes that I wrote and some things that he said. Number one, your personality creates your personal reality. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the very beginning of a transformation, there is this pyramid of success. At the tip of the pyramid are the processes. That's the everyday know-how. That's you, that's you doing a course. That's you reading a book. That's the tip. And I won't give out the entire pyramid, but at the bottom of the pyramid is your self-awareness. Mm. The awareness of self to be able to objectify your subjective self, to be able to be conscious of your unconscious behavior. This is the most important concept because if you can't see yourself, if you can't acknowledge the mistakes you're making, there's no way you can make changes. There's no way you can incorporate new habits. One thing he said is that nerve cells that fire together, wire together. Nerve cells that fire together, wire together. Learning creates new synaptic connections. Remembering retains them, right? When I see your videos and your speaking the way that you do, one thing you're doing by reinstating the basics, you're reminding yourself and you're keeping these synaptic connections there, right? And it works the same with habits. Habits are basically just actions you keep performing time and time again to a point whereby they just become autonomous and you're doing them, not realizing it, okay? It was in the book... Uh, by Tony Robbins, uh, Awaken the Giant Within. He speaks about every time you perform an action, you create this thread-like neurological 
connection between the action and the outcome. So, for example, someone's on a smoker, but then they had a stressful day and they lit up a cigarette for the first time and it brought them some temporary relief in that moment. The brain will associate every time you have a fight or flight, smoking apparently fixes that for you temporarily. Now, if you go back and revisit that same habit twice, that thread like becomes a bit, of, a bit bigger. It becomes like a rope, then a small string, then into a rope, then it becomes a tree trunk of neurological connections to a point where you're smoking, realizing it's causing you damage, realizing it's giving you cancer. But because you've built such a strong neurological network of autonomous behavior, you don't even realize it anymore and you won't care. So when you go cold turkey on a habit, you may not think something's taking place, but every day, that big tree trunk, a little string gets taken away every day, right? You were drinking coffee. I gave up coffee in 2021. And one thing that Tony Robbins said, once you get to a place whereby you've abstained from it for a certain period of time, most people say, I just don't associate with it anymore. Mm. And that's how I feel about coffee when I gave up coffee in 2021. Now, I was, an, I, I was an avid coffee drinker. I drank a lot of coffee back in the day. Mm. And um, I decided to just take a seven-day sabbatical and just give caffeine a break for about seven days. And um, it got to a place where I had such severe, I'll just digress for a second, but I'll come back to a point with this. It got to such a strong headache the next day. I thought, wow, what is this crazy headache? It was giving me kaleidoscope vision and everything else. I'm like, wow, if that's what this is doing to me, I'm not going to do coffee. Um, <clears throat> so I gave up coffee. And every day as I did that, now I've got friends that drink coffee around me and I smell it. And sometimes, you know, you associate that sentiment. But one thing I did for a long time, because the abstinence of it has now just made me disassociate with it. So instilling good habits comes with repetition. It comes with you understanding how the brain works. The overcoming process is the becoming process. What does that mean? It means when you're instilling a new habit and you're feeling that sense of discomfort there and then, that overcoming of something is you becoming something. What do most people do once they instill a new habit? It's just, it's uncomfortable. What do they do? They check out. No, nah, this ain't for me. Can't do this. Tried carnival for seven days. No, nah, had headaches everywhere. Just had withdrawals. No, nah, not for me. Okay, so once you truly understand how the brain works and how habits get formed, what's the saying? Repetition is the mother of skill. It's also the establishment of habits. Once you understand how to do that over time and time again, and you are aware of yourself and you go through meditation and you do certain things through meditation, how not to, to remind yourself of who you no longer wish to be every day, and also to remind yourself of who you wish to become. Jonas Spencer says, we're either creating our moment-to-moment -moment reality based on a memory of the past or a vision of the future. Right? So the me I see is the me I will be. That's the way that it goes. So habits are so important. And after a while, once you do it, most of our group that does the carnivore diet we don't do the carnivore diet because we have to do it. We do it because we want to do it. Because we get to a place whereby you've experienced for the first time probably ever what true health feels like. And once you reintroduce habits of the past, a meal that you used to eat that wasn't serving you, contraindicated, once you bring that in and the house has been clean and now you've brought it in, boy, do you feel a difference. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's the reason. And, and once you establish these habits, you're not doing them because you have to do them. You do them because you know what it feels like and you want to do them. And you want to live your best version of yourself. You want to, you want to be, look, feel, and perform your best every day. That's why you do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically it sounds like that that, particular step is around 
using the power of your mind to mould your perception of the reality that you perceive around you powerfully enough, with enough repetition, with enough uh, gumption, for want of a better word, to actually bring that into being so that it then becomes a genuine reality and not a fake it till you make it reality. Am I off the mark there or...? No, you're on it. You're right on that mark, right? And if you want to get a little deeper with realities... Yep. You know, when I was a young kid, I'll take you deep on this one. I used to... I was around during the... Now, this, this would probably declare my age when uh, Atari was big and Commodore 64 was big and all those video games were big. I used to, I used to be fascinated. How is it? I've got this CD ROM, but I've popped it inside the video game. I'm holding this joystick. When I push up, the cursor goes up. When I hit the button, it fires or it jumps or it does something. What's going on there? How does the computer know that what I'm doing here is appearing? And here's the answer. Every algorithm, every possibility is a completed event and it's printed on the disk. Every outcome has already taken place. You're just choosing what part of what's already happened to re-experience again. And life is a little bit like that too. Every reality that could ever happen in your life has already happened. You are choosing what of all that's happened to relive again. For example, there is a reality, listener, of you in jail right now for first-degree murder. That reality is taking place right now. The difference is you are not experiencing it taking place, right? There's a reality of you as a sidewalk bum. There's a reality of you healthy, lean, and young. There's a reality of you living a very abundant life. What's the difference? Well, the difference is you have not put forth the three algorithms that are required to to make that reality real. And what are those three algorithms? Your thoughts, your words, and your actions. Now, I'll give you an example. If the reality of you for first-degree murder is happening right now and you're not experiencing this happening right now, then how would you call forth that reality? Well, I'll ask you. If all you did was think about killing somebody, would it send you to jail? The answer is no. What about if you thought about it, but then spoke about it? Would that change your reality? I'd say yes. Because the moment you express it through words, you could be done for premeditation, for death threats. Speaking about it is not the same as thinking about it. But the moment you think about it, speak about it, and then decide to pull the trigger, you take the action, you've unlocked the algorithm of that reality which was there all along waiting for you. It's the same with obesity. I can think a donut all day long. I can speak a donut, I still won't get fat. But the moment I eat the donut, that's the difference. So action finishes the miracle process of creation. Action. Right, And when you understand that you have all these realities happening right now, the question is, which reality would you like to bring forth? If you wish to have a healthy, lean and young reality that's already out there waiting for you, you must think, speak and act in direct alignment to that reality. That's why I refuse to grow up, Anthony. <laughs> I love that. You know what? If you read any work, any of the works of Bruce Lipton, he's written the book, The Biology of Belief, he makes some fascinating concepts regarding how our perspective influences our genes. It's fascinating if you see it, but like the, the idea that you never want to grow up, you know that plays in outside your love, your amazing diet and your incredible nutraceuticals that you take outside of those, but the concept of you, that you have this youthful nature about you, you know, that plays an a huge role in the fact that you have an age. Yeah. Okay. Would you agree? Yeah. 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 
Hundred percent. My mother, she got God bless her. She's seventy six. Never touched a pill. She's never. I mean, she'll cry over a Panadol. Mm-hmm. She's never touched a pill, and she's and she speaks eight languages. Right. She's a really smart lady. She's she's published over sixty books. She's an incredible woman, and she's got such a youthful coexistence about her. She's just so youthful, mm. and you can see it. I'm a big believer in that. Awesome. Those who are, those who speak about, I mean, I don't verbalize anything I don't want to be. Mm. You'll never hear me say I'm tired. I don't want to be tired. You will never hear me say I'm bored. I don't want to be bored. I do not verbalize anything I do not want. What's the ancient scripture? The power of life or death lies in the tongue. Mm. Yeah. So, so all of this concept of, of getting healthy is not just do this, do that. It's a philosophy. It's becoming someone different. You have to, you have to lose your mind to recreate a new one. You do. Right? Some of the most awakened people that I've spoken to. If I say, are you out of your mind? I say, yes, yes, I am out of my mind. As if it's a beautiful thing. Not as if like we use being out of your mind as like, are you crazy? Mm. Right? No, I am. I'm not in control of my mind. I'm not my mind. Yeah. Yeah. So the Lean 7 is not just a course that you do to get yourself in shape. It really is. It really is a personal development journey with a product attached. It really is. It's, mm. it's, it's not just about giving you the know-how. It, it really is about establishing habits. It really is about bearing old self and recreating from anew. It really is about having a great um, uh, community around you. I think it's important when we started doing carnivore, now, trace back, I was doing the ketogenic diet for the last decade, mm. since 2009, and only recently through the works of uh, Anthony Chafee, which we've, we've spoken to, he's a great guy, Dr. Anthony Chafee, I didn't know about the whole concept of toxins in, in plants, mm. okay, because I still wasn't feeling 100%, even though on the ketogenic diet with the inclusion of plants. So once I started slowly over a period of time eliminating them, boy, did it make a difference. Yeah. Right. So, um, so yeah. So the, the the carnivore diet is 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 a, is a it's end game for everybody who's but they're just not aware of it yet. It's end. The reason why it's end game, but is because it was start game. Yeah. That's that's why. So we've got a we took a massive circle right around. You know, messed it all up along the way and going back to where we were. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So remind us of the contact for the program. The- yes. So anybody who's interested in finding out more about the Lean 7, go to lean7.com.au. And as you go there, you can just um, yeah, book in through the calendar link. You can book in a discovery call and we'll be able to um, organize a catch up. We'll go from there. And um, yeah, if you uh, see fit, we're happy to get you healthy, lean and young. Awesome. Step yeah. one, where are you now? There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I have to say, I do appreciate all the work that you do, but I um, I love your personality. I, I love your quirky ways. I've watched a lot of your videos that I could just, you know, especially the, react, the reactive videos, you know, they said, oh, I didn't say that. Wait for this now. Wait for this now. <laughs> <laughs> They didn't say the C word or they didn't say cause. They said, oh, they said risk. What did you say risk for? Yeah. You're going to hear it right now. But it's good because I think your way of um, – it's one of the best ways to teach. The best ways to teach um, is uh, you react in a certain way. By the way, the best way to learn it is to teach it. Yeah. Right? In my opinion, the best way to learn something is to teach it. But the way that I pick up your information is – is conversationally uh, in reactive manner that you do, um, especially through through anger and frustration. <laughs> well, faux anger and frustration a bit. 
<laughs> but it's, it's, it's well it's well controlled. Yeah, I, I do play it up. Obviously, it's it's a hook for views. It is, for it's clicks. a hook, and it actually does. The clicks love it, and it's a good reason. Yeah. To I mean, it. don't get me wrong; it does frustrate me. It does annoy me intensely that these what idiots. Annoys you, what annoys you the most? Um, it's the arrogance of these clowns hmm. that come online and say things that are unequivocally, demonstrably, absolutely, unquestioningly wrong, bad information and bad advice for people, mm-hmm. as if they come from a position of authority and know what they're talking about. Yes. And it's the whole Dunning-Kruger thing that annoys me. It's It's people frankly, who would struggle in my estimation to actually reach three digits on an IQ test, coming online, making themselves out to be some kind of expert in stuff that they absolutely know nothing about whatsoever. And as such, you know, put forward damaging, false disinformation that even stupider people listen to and go, oh, well, that must be right then. And why, I mean, man, like, how can these people... I mean, the first the first sign of a, of, a, of a problem is acknowledging you've got a problem. Yeah. If you haven't got the the very awareness to recognise your own incompetence, mm. okay, and then you're backing that up with a sense of posture, a posture that comes across as authoritative or cre- credible in some way, mm. right? And and you, and you wear that on your sleeve because no one's actually. I mean, they're speaking to the everyday people. No one's actually stopped them and said, "Show me proof. Mm. Show me a study." No yeah. one's done that. Yeah. Everyone's just taking everything they're saying at face value as if it's the truth. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's frustrating. <laughs> I mean, I bandy around the word the word arrogant a lot about these these kind of individuals. And a lot of people reflect that back to me and say, Well, you know, isn't that the pot calling the kettle black? You're arrogant yourself, they say to me. To which I then have to refer them to the definition of what is arrogance. Okay, sure. Arrogance is an inappropriate self confidence. Yeah, nice. My self-confidence is absolutely underpinned by runs on the board. Mm. I am not inappropriately self-confident. I will Mm. stand toe-to-toe with anybody and debate the whys, wherefores, and ins and outs of anything I've had to say at any time publicly, and I will prevail because I craft my message so carefully, I choose my words so accurately and and carefully that I am setting up a foundation that is unassailable because the position I'm coming from, the information I want people to understand is unassailable. You, yeah. you cannot find a chink in this armor because there isn't one. There is not one. There isn't one. Mm. That's why I, I. That's why I communicate the way I do. That's why I have the confidence and the belligerence to tear down those who do have chinks in their armor. And you'll notice that I always challenge the people that I'm taking shots at the chinks in their armor and saying, "Come and defend it. Come and speak to me live on camera. Let's debate this." Not one of them that actually has more than three brain cells will front for that because they know absolutely they front me and we know what happens. Well, you become you become a threat to, number one, their very belief structure, but number two, to their organisation they've built based on their belief structure. Yeah. You become a threat to that. You throw you're a paradigm shift. You you throw a spanner in the works. Hey, hold on. Mm. What if everything you thought was right was actually wrong? Mm. Okay. And here's the evidence oh. that it in fact is wrong. It definitely. Is wrong. Yeah, not actually is wrong. Yeah. Where do you go to from there? You almost have to unteach everything you thought you knew yeah. about things. Mm. And um, we're all here for absolute truth, and I'm not in charge of absolute truth. I don't know who is. Me, I'm the science. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a science. Hey, yes. I researched it. All right. Yeah, good. But, um, but truth is not measured. It's not measured in mass appeal. Mm. No. Some of the best. Some of the best. And, and you can see that on YouTube. Some of the best channels that I've actually. I look for the ones with the least amount of subscribers. Mm. You know, it's not measured in mass appeal. You're not going to get it through mainstream. No, you need you need to get it through. I mean, I I discovered you 
was by accident, to be honest. Well, that's because the algorithm won't allow it. Otherwise, you have to find me by accident. Wow, there you go. I'm I'm so banned because of my narrative is so unacceptable um, that I don't I don't get promoted by the YouTubes in the way I ought. But far out. That's another. That's hey, another day. Let's keep it that way. Not everyone's supposed to be healthy and eating young, man. Not everyone's. Just keep it that way. It's a little secret. It's a little secret Between society us. going on. Exactly. Um, but no, I, I appreciate <clears throat> the work we do and the work that you do. A lot of the, what we speak about, um, I mean, I have a filter. I have a certain level. Uh, if it doesn't pass through um, c- certain of my role models that I look up to, you know what I mean? And fortunately, the ones that I do look up to all have the same message. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So um, keep doing the great work you're doing. I will. What's your favorite um, What's your favorite alter ego that you use? Do you have one? What's your favorite one? Um, I enjoy very much all of the different characters that I kind of play on the YouTubes mm. to some degree. They're all, they're all um, cobbled together either from various entertainers that I've seen over the over the years in some way or people that I've actually met. They're, they're all mannerisms and things that I have borrowed from somewhere. Yeah. Obviously, off camera, when I'm, you know, not doing my thing and I'm just being myself at home, there's a completely different mm-hmm. character than what the bloke that most of you have come to know and hopefully love on the YouTubes. Um so yeah, they're all they're all fun. Um, oh no, I could pick one. I'd, the general, perhaps. Yeah, the field marshal. Yeah, he's he's yeah, he's, he's always marshal. good fun. Um, I, I also enjoy the vicariousnessnessnessness of of allowing Ted to do his thing quite a bit. And, and as of recent, I've seen you. Um, the no carb life dude. Both of you wearing the wigs on. I'm loving that look. Yeah, it's good fun. Yep. Just for some, you know, no, not necessarily any particular character appended, but just a bit of flippancy yeah. and a bit of fun. That's good. Um, you know, it, it's also about keeping the viewer guessing, having a different hook, making, yeah. you know, because otherwise it, it can become samey, samey. And I want to yeah. keep, I want to keep this message growing. I want to keep reaching ever more people, despite the fact that. You know the the, power, the powers that be are, are absolutely with, without any question working against my visibility. Mm-hmm. I could tell you stories about that, but that's for another day. We'll talk about that maybe. Yeah, right. perhaps behind the scenes, whatever. But uh, yeah, it's 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 about that, and it's a bit of fun. It keeps it it keeps it interesting. I've also now you've you've probably noticed I now have a panel of people, and I'm going to expand that panel. Love who it. will come on the live streams on a. Saturday afternoon US time, Sunday morning Australasia time. Yeah, and we do a clock. It was I think I think um, when you try when you messaged uh, my, my business partner Melissa when you messaged her regarding it's like you jump on someone's not able to make it, it was like yeah. four in the morning. <laughs> uh, yeah, it depends on what part of uh, part of the world you're in as to what time it'll be. I'm also now going to expand the start and end time of that weekly q a interactive sure. session so that yeah. i can have pa- people coming on and off the panel and tagging in and out at various stages so instead yeah. of a two-hour show i'm now going to do a four-hour show for example Brilliant. so i'll let you guys know and obviously you'll yeah. be welcome to join the panel that. as well so that's things to hey, look forward um, to just on that thing about um about the algorithms being controlled right mm. um, i was I was listening, I was following this psychic medium lady. Oh, yeah. And, and now I'm, I wasn't a big fan of all this sort of stuff, but the things that this lady's predicted over the years are ridiculous. Mm. I mean, they're, they're just so on point. Mm-hmm. Guess what? Her, her channel's been multiple times taken down, mm-hmm. multiple times taken down, controlled. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, man, and there's, something, there's something to that. Mm. Say something to that. So obviously, it's a good thing because you, you're, pu- you're pushing buttons. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's another validation why you're pushing buttons, man. Mm. Yep. You know, the, the the more the channel does glacially, painfully, slowly grow, the more it tends to get pushed back even harder and harder and harder. So, whatever yeah. success we do achieve, it is it is because of the subscribers that are helping to push the message out there to a wider audience and share it on their social media and 
let people know we exist. So keep doing that. Appreciate it very much. No, I will do that. Appreciate you, Anthony, for your time today I and you for too, your brother. for your eloquent and and quite um, informative description of what you guys are doing. I'm fully behind it, absolutely. Um, and we will compare notes in the background about that as well. Absolutely. And, and we'll be in touch very soon with you. And if you ever need to, the, uh, that panel going on, happy to be a part of it anytime. Awesome. You need to. Brilliant. Okay. We'll have you. Have a great day. Thank All right. You for and you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. All right. See you then.